I'm currently disconnected. This is Let's Make Stuff. Let's make a Lego costume. For this build, you will need a large cardboard box, some EVA foam, some thick cardboard sheets, some cardboard tubes, and a whole bunch of other stuff. Okay, so first things first, grab your box. Now the box needs to be huge. When I say huge, you need to be able to fit your entire body in it and be able to move around a lot. Now lay your block box flat, and what you're going to do is measure out a fifth of the bottom there, and that's going to be the bottom half or the leg start on the Lego costume. And for the top bit, you're going to measure out the center and also where your shoulders meet in the box. As you can see, I've got a bit of room there between the edges of the box and where my shoulders are. I'm just going to make some lines on the front and back of the box and also at the top join those lines up so that I get a Lego shape. Before I forget, also remember to put in some arm holes. Make them a, make them a bit larger than your arms because remember you're going to have to put a whole sleeve in there. Now when you've cut the front, the top and the back of the box where you've just drawn those lines, you should be able to push it inside itself creating a nice smooth join on both sides of the box, giving you that Lego Man shape. Okay, so now for the head, um, what I've done here is I've just traced out uh, the size of the bucket that I used for the helmet, so I don't know how big the head can be. Also, I know my head's gonna be able to fit through it. Now for the legs, this was a bit tricky. What I did here was I, I traced out a big picture of myself, like I got an idea of my proportions, I guess you call them, and uh, and then traced over the top of that how big I wanted the legs and the chest and the arm pieces to be. Here's a picture of myself traced out, and you can just see over the top of it where I've traced out the legs. Now you're going to need four of these pieces here, in this shape, but uh, keep in mind that you don't need the front part there, that big curved part, that doesn't need to be that big. I don't know why I made it that big. You can make it smaller than that and it'll still look just as good. It'll probably look better. You'll probably be able to move around a lot easier. Um, just remember to measure out, once you've made the leg shape, the, the template shape there, start measuring out the shin piece, your foot, top foot piece, and the uh, front foot piece. And of course, those dimensions are gonna, are gonna be different for every person, but they, obviously get the, this is the general shape you want, the, you want them to be and you want them to cover your whole legs all the way up to just below the hip so that you can still walk around and you don't want it hitting your crotch you want it, you want a bit of space between the top of the leg and the crotch just like in the picture so remember you're going to cut four of those leg pieces you're going to cut two front shin pieces two top feet pieces two front feet pieces and once you've cut them all out using uh, using the main leg piece, the main leg shape as a, as a reference for all the other pieces so that it all fits together well. Now to join all these pieces together was a bit tricky so what I did ended up doing was putting masking tape on one side and uh, then using a box to hold up the pieces on the other side and then glued them in place with some hot glue. And once the glue was dry then I reinforced the legs with some duct tape. Keep it tearing apart and it seems to work. I've been using my legs for a while now, running around. But... Okay, so once you've got them all together on one side and you know that they're all strong and aren't going to spin out of control, it's time to work on the knee part here. Now I ended up using some EVA foam for this, using the back plate as a reference point of hope for size. I ended up sticking it down with some vinyl adhesive first. And that didn't seem to, I wasn't happy with the result of that, so then I just, re once it dried, I reinforced it with some hot glue. And um, that seems to have worked really well. Once that's dry, it's time to work on the other side. Okay, so using the previous technique of masking tape in one side to hold it in place and then gluing it from the inside, hot gluing it in place, and then once the hot glue is done, reinforce the inside with some duct tape. Okay, now for the back plate of the leg pieces. Just cut out some circles to resemble the Lego holes in the back of the Lego man's legs. And then just grab some scrap cardboard to um, cover them up. As long as there's a little bit of an indentation in there, it gives the general effect and doesn't leave your legs exposed to the elements. 
And once that's dry, just glue the back plate in place, just like all the other pieces. Easy peasy. Okay, now onto the arm piece. Grab some EVA foam and just measure out an arm's length worth. And I'm using a old postage tube here to get a sort of a size reference. Make sure that I don't make it too thick or too thin, that my arm can fit in it easily. And then I'm gonna tape it up on the outside and just make sure that it fits inside the hole that I made previously on the Lego body. Okay, so once I've checked that it's uh, fitting okay, I'm gonna put it on a, a nice angle, a nice comfortable angle, and then trace out a circle around the outside of the arm, just at the top. And then what I'm gonna do is, using the piece I cut out as a reference, I'm gonna cut out some circles just slightly larger than the actual size of the hole. And what I'm gonna do is slide these arms in from the inside. Okay, so for the elbow bend, I just cut a sort of a mouth shape, put some shoe goo on, and glued it into place. Nice easy bend. Now onto the hand bits. Oh, the hands. Man, this was so frustrating, I gotta tell you. Okay, so for this part I used a cardboard tube for the wrist and a nice big piece of EVA foam for the outside of the hand. I cut out two C's, which are roughly the same size, slightly larger than my own hand, making that, 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 that shape. So if you could make that shape with your hand, that's how big you want the C to be. And then I just hot glued it in place. I tried shoe fix, which took too long to dry, so I ended up using hot glue, which worked out fine. Um, then glue the bottom C on. As you can see, I've got a slight curve at the end there, which is just like the Lego hands themselves. Yeah, I mean, if you're not sure how big or small to make them, cut it out in paper first. And join it with some, with some tape to get an idea if that's gonna fit. For the centerpiece, I just used a bit of scrap, glued it in place, and once it was dry, just cut it with a box cutter and some scissors. Uh, uh, then use those scrap pieces to cover the front part of the hand. And uh, once that's done, it's time to cover everything in uh, undercoat or white paint. Just remember to ventilate. Because, uh, if you don't ventilate an area when you're painting, you can tend to go a little bit nuts. Lego bag, why don't you dry? I wanna put another cup of paint on you. That's what I want to do, and you too, Lego on. Now it's time to cover everything in some blue paint. Cover your hands, your arms and legs. I did forget to put the arm piece on here where the hand is going to slide in. It's just a circle. For the hand to slide in, you can glue it in with some hot glue and cover it with some paint. No big deal. Now it's onto the oxygen tank. Now for this I used some plastic tubes, some plumbing tubes, I don't know what you call them. But they were too heavy. I mean, if I had to do this again, I would definitely just make the tubes out of cardboard. Just, you know, as you, or even make them out of foam, if EBA foam if you want. Like I made the other parts out of anything but this, because these things are way too heavy. Now I stuffed the inside with some cardboard, and here's a piece of insulation tube from a hot water heater, and I'm just using that as the neck piece. I'm gonna tape it on. Then what we're going to do is going to put some expanding foam over the top to hold that in place and carve, the, carve, that, carve that foam when it's dry so that it looks like the top of, uh, of an oxygen tank. I used a hacksaw blade just to cut the foam off and it came off pretty easily with that. Uh, I used a, a few other tools as well. I used a Dremel for some of the final work and a box cutter. A nice stuff, sharp Stanley knife blade to do the rest. And um, after that, I just glued on some pieces for where the oxygen oxygen tank outlets were. And then covered it in some white paint. And then once I'd done that, uh, it was time to cover it in some blue paint. Well, like I said, this thing was very heavy. Uh, if, I was gonna, if you're going to make this, just make the bottom half out of cardboard. I can't stress that enough. This was so heavy. It didn't have to be. I could have just used cardboard or foam. I could have used anything. Lesson. Now to hold it in place, I cut some holes in the back and I cut some holes inside the oxygen tank and put some tape right in between them to join them and then glued the, those pieces of tape in place with some hot glue. I put them up and down the sides. And then for the top piece, I just glued it on with some hot glue where the circle already was. And that's it. You've got yourself a Benny costume.